What is going on guys? We are back with a video that a lot of you guys have been waiting for and that is going to be our how to draft the perfect fantasy draft team in Madden 23. Of course, we're going to have to do a fantasy draft to do that. I'm going to be talking about some of the picks that you can make while I'm selecting, but if you wanted to have pretty much the exact same team as me, you could also do that. For me, the definition of a perfect fantasy draft team is a team that has a developable quarterback uh, a couple of developable wide receivers, and a lot of good players all around. So it's not going to be a team that's got Patrick Mahomes at quarterback one, and then you have like, I don't know, some super fast wide receiver that's really good at number two, you know, you know second pick and all that. It's going to be players that I think are going to make you a good team, but you still have those fun developable guys like we'll probably end up with a developable a uh, developable running back, but he won't be that high of an overall right away. Same with a couple of wide receivers, tight end, all that stuff. Like, tight end right now, I'd say will probably be Trey McBride later on. Quarterback, I would say, is probably going to be Malik Willis. Uh, those are kind of the spoilers for that. But in case you don't know how to do a fantasy draft, we're going to show you. That's one of the things we have to start out with. So you do the create a league. We showed you this already if you watched the other video, but maybe this is the first time you're seeing it. Maybe it's the first time you're seeing the channel, which if you are... Maybe subscribe, maybe leave a like. We do a ton of franchise stuff, and we've already been kind of killing it. You guys have been killing it with the support already. I really appreciate you. So if you're not someone that's new and you're already subscribed, you already have the, the notification bell on, I really do appreciate you a ton. And, yeah, that's pretty much that. But the only thing you really need to do, starting point, fantasy drafts, league settings, switch off pre-existing injury everything else like i would probably end up turning this off later on down the line maybe injuries off for preseason if you're not going to play it perhaps uh you know progressive fatigue may need to be turned off you know this even though it seems to like not work you know whatever quarter length and that's kind of it and then you you click a and then you click the fantasy draft now i want some pick around 14 to 16 so i already have one waiting maybe we'll get lucky here actually we don't but just in case one of the two players that I want is still there, we will take a look. So our wide receiver that we might want is gone. And of course, as expected, Jair is gone. This is post-draft right now, and I think I forgot. I don't, I don't even know if I remember to say like and subscribe, which, hey, maybe if you want to. Uh, but I will have a uh, link in the description for the list of players of when they kind of roughly go. Uh, in case you don't want to have the exact team as me and you want to see when some of the other players you may want to grab go. It's going to be a notepad, so it's not going to look the greatest, but it'll still be usable. You might have to like double tap the image unless you're on uh, PC. You can literally just click the image and it should enlarge it, That which is what they said. And now we could get screwed over, but around, like I said, 14 to 16 is probably the best pick. I think 15 might be the exact perfect pick, but 14 is also pretty good uh, as you could tell, or as you would assume, the top tier picks are pretty much all going to be quarterbacks. If you wanted the literal best possible team, which in my opinion isn't perfect because it's kind of boring to rock with a quarterback that's already established, you're probably going to want pick one or two. Usually Josh Allen goes at number two. I think he might be the best quarterback in the game. Uh, but for me, it's just not fun having an established quarterback like that already. I don't know. Maybe it is for you guys, but for me, it's just... It kind of ruins it a bit. It feels like I should do well. Whereas if we're developing someone like Malik Willis or Ritter or something, it's like, yeah, we got to develop them a little bit. But with pick 14, the choices I would say are between just two guys. That is DK Metcalf, who is absolutely absurdly good. Uh, maybe the best wide receiver in the game when you talk about how long he can play and how good he is and how big he is and fast he is. And then you have Jair, who, ironically enough, is also probably the best cornerback in the game based on age and all that. There are some really good players as well that are pretty similar. The reason why I'm not going to go with Jair, though, is because there's a bunch of star dev corners that last very long. And hell, even my fourth round guy might be Denzel Ward. And even he may not be needed because there are so many cornerbacks. Like, I think we have Eric Stokes in round, like, 18 or 20, which is crazy. So even though I usually like to just fully develop wide receivers... It doesn't hurt to have a guy like Metcalf at your number one helm, especially when you're trying to develop a guy like Willis. So our first pick of the draft is going to be Metcalf. He usually goes around 13 to 15, but I've seen him at 14 and 15 more commonly than not. And as you can see here, it's exactly where he went. Then with the next pick, hopefully he is there. It's actually a pick, and he is. It's a pick that I haven't really been making too much lately, but I really like a superstar lineman. 
and Quentin Nelson goes around pick 20 in the second round, I really don't think there's a better choice than him for that lineman spot. I think his abilities are also a little bit better. Uh, I don't know if Worfs is here. Worfs is gone. I think he does go a bit sooner. Oh, Worfs actually goes like pick 30 for me, usually. Unless he moved to left tackle. Yeah, how the hell is he gone already? Like, I've done a bunch of these, and Quentin Nelson literally always goes around 20. And Werfs, oh, he went right there. Would have actually been a good thought. I, I don't know why he wouldn't be on my list, but if he's there for you, I'd probably honestly go Werfs over Quentin. But I think you got to go Quentin Nelson. Like, some of the other options I would have here instead would have been, like, you have Tua at 22, Jeffrey Simmons at 24, but I'm looking to hopefully get Vita Vea next round. Uh, Chris Godwin, DJ Moore, CD Lamb, Ronnie Stanley. Let's actually see if Ronnie Stanley's still there. Let's see what overall he is, because he should be superstar still. Yeah, he's 28, though. So I think it's clear cut the best choice is Quentin Nelson. I think with like age regression and retirement, he may be here for literally a decade still at 26. You know, if you want to go with a guy like Fields, who's super fun, you could have gone there. Mark Andrews is pretty fun. Uh, Chase Young's decent, but. You know, a lot of these guys, for some reason, like, I get it, like, Superstar Dev is big, but the wide receiver position is very strange. Like, I think Jamison Williams goes, like, round 10 behind guys like Jerry Judy and whatnot. It's like, that makes no sense to me. But in the third round, I think it's so clear-cut. I've actually really, really loved Vita Vea. He is 27, which, you know, it's getting up there for sure. I just really love Vita Vea in the game specifically. He is so huge, and he's decently athletic, and he's super good, and he's superstar. I think you can't really go wrong with Vita Vea, and that's who we're going to take in the third round. Some of the choices outside of him may have been Sewell. Trey Lance, I think, was just still there, barely. Aquano, maybe. Uh, Trayvon Diggs wouldn't have been the worst call in the world. Jordan Davis would have been a really good pick as well, but I think Jordan Davis, even though he's really young and good, uh, he's obviously going to be gone here right now, but uh, Jordan Davis obviously is a bit of a lower overall, whereas Vita Vea is, is obviously more developed. And while, sure, Jordan Davis will play a lot longer than him, it is probably important to note that most franchises probably don't go past five years anyways. Obviously, Vita Vea 32 is still going to be great. And then we have round four, which is what we're in, of course. Denzel Ward usually goes about 26. Got a guy like Najee Harris at 22, if that's who you wanted to go with. Jamal Adams at 18, if he's there, is pretty interesting, but he is not there for us. But as you know, I mean, it's been how many years in a row now where Denzel Ward has been one of my guys that I draft. He's just so good. Of course, he's only star, but look at how good he is. I mean, if he actually became a superstar, even just superstar, he probably jumps to the first round with how good he is. 25 as well, so you have plenty of years to get that dev up. Denzel Ward, this so far, this draft, has probably been the best draft we've ever had for a perfect fantasy draft guide. Like, usually we have, like, some lower overall early. No, we are killing this right now, which, of course is expected these are actually the picks that i would expect to have there's not been a guy that's like oh he's actually there that that hasn't happened yet this is literally how i would expect the draft to go and of course sadly greg newsom is gone he would have been a thought perhaps which obviously means aj terrell is gone as well as uh some of the guys that we're expecting to be here would have been like greg newsom at 13 hawkinson at 16 tunsil at 17 elton jenkins is maybe a decent choice at 18 jamel dean at 20 and crazy enough in my first fantasy draft video that I made, we took Jordan Mailata at 21 in the fifth round. That is exactly where I had him go. Two out of three Sims. And the dog is going crazy. And then now, honestly, I, I really don't know what to take. Uh, Rashawn Gary would have went pick five in the fifth round, which would have been a lovely pick if he was still there. Tunsil, maybe. I don't know what his age is, but I'm pretty sure he's a really high overall, so maybe that's a thought. Elton Jenkins, he's decent. He's 26 and all that, but... I think we can probably get a lineman just as good a little bit later. Maybe not just as good, but better. Then it's kind of like a bunch of wide receivers, which obviously we already have Metcalf. We could probably wait on wide receiver to like 15 or 20. You know, it's Marquise Brown, Pittman, uh, Montez Sweat as an edge rusher, maybe. But I kind of want to go with like Trayvon Walker and maybe a Jabo later. 
Uh, but round six, the beginning of round six, would be pick two as Devin White and Roquan at three. And the reason why I have uh, Roquan Smith higher is because he's just, in general, a better player in the game by quite a bit. He's just a little slower. One thing I do want to take a look, though, is uh, at a rating they won't show, and that's change of direction. And Roquan Smith's uh, change of direction is only one lower than Devin, so we are going to be going with Roquan Smith. Can you really pass on it? Lining, like, blocking this year is really rough. Trayvon Walker is good, but I Frank's too good. Not I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change it. Could go Trayvon Walker instead there. I'm going to go Frank. And weirdly enough, Trayvon's still here for me, though. I had Trayvon going in the first 10 picks... Literally all three Sims I did, which is very questionable. Wait, Aiden Hutchinson 6-7, by the way? Is he... Is he actually? Wait. Oh, damn. I thought he was 6-5 at best 6-6. He crazy. But yeah, I guess we clutched up. I, I guess Trayvon Walker is obtainable here, perhaps. So we're going to grab him. I mean, he's still there. I mean, what am I supposed to do? Unless I'm a whole round early. Yeah, I'm not. We're just, we're just killing it. But if Trayvon's not there... Or you decide to go Trayvon the round earlier. You could go Creed Humphrey, which is kind of like the opposite of uh, Frank Ragnall a little bit. Of course, we could. It depends on what kind of league you're in or, you know, if you're just like what kind of morale you have or, you know, or morals you depend. Frank Ragnall, of course, is super athletic. He's 6'5", 308, built kind of like a, a tackle could easily play right tackle for us. And I really feel like we're building too OP of a roster, but Jamison Williams is too good and too fun not to take as he is a guy that goes later portion of the eighth round. Usually have him at 30-ish, so we're going to grab Jamison Williams. We now have probably the best wide receivers in the league, even if it wasn't a fantasy. Like, if it wasn't a fantasy and we could have those two players, that's probably the best cornerback or wide receiver duo in the league. And now we have a really tough decision. We have the choice between Jeremy Chin and Isaiah Simmons. And the reason why that's tough is because we do have a lot of really, really good linebackers in the future. And we already have Roquan. I actually think, let's see, 65 block shed, 75 zone, 72 catching. 65 block shed, 75 zone, 72 catching. Jeremy Chin, he is better. And, of course, you could absolutely play him at uh, linebacker if you wanted to. His block shedding is worse. It's also a little weird that he is the overall he is here, but I think because we have great linebackers later on anyways, and we already have Roquan, I'm going to go Jeremy Chin here. But yeah, because Jeremy Chin and Isaiah Simmons are, uh, you know, pick seven and nine at the 10th round, you're going to have to reach on them a little bit if you want. So that's, you know, that's the choice we made. So we have Kenneth Walker here, who is an early uh, round 11 guy. Malik Willis is later round 11. I'm hoping he is there. I usually have him around 20-ish. So Kenneth Walker is going to be my choice, as he is actually one of the best running backs in the entire game when you consider the speed excel, the fact that he's a dual-style uh, running back as well. And then once again, we are hoping our boy is here, and he is Malik Willis. You cannot really ask for a better quarterback than him. Awareness is really bad, but super fast, super strong. 23s, yeah, it's not great, but there's a lot of QB breakouts in the game, and he's going to be our quarterback of the future. And this is kind of like the roundman line, uh, roundman lines, <laughs> lineman rounds, like 12 to 13. So uh, Tyler Linderbaum is going to be my choice. A little iffy on that strength, but outside of the strength, he's actually really good. And of course, he's a hidden youngster, so he'll play center. Ragnar is going to go to right tackle. All right, so here is another kind of luxury pick, but Jamin Davis, 23 years old, 6'4", 234. His block shedding's really bad, but you're pretty much getting almost the same thing as Isaiah Simmons here, so that's who we're going to be grabbing. Once again, kind of a luxury pick. The next pick is going to be another rookie guy, uh, which will be a player that you'll probably see a lot in our Vikings franchise, which, of course, is going to be Lewis Seen, who is absolutely absurd, probably the best rookie safety in the draft uh, for the game at least maybe even real life who knows but for the game and there was a lot of really good ones so that is actually a pretty big praise to get and obviously he's uh, completely worth it of course then around 15 we are going to be grabbing a super steel Trey Hendrickson of course he's 27 of course he's normal of course EA has neglected this man for two straight years but he is absolutely worth it and you'll have two plus years to at least try to get him to star or superstar and now we are reaching a little bit. I have a couple of players around like 18 to 19 that all go kind of early. So for us to grab them all, we're going to have to grab them kind of early. And Eric Stokes 
Once again, similar to Trey Hendrickson, kind of, uh, if you will, underrated with the dev, which means he falls a little bit later in the draft. And of course, we got him totally worth it. 23 normal, plenty of time to develop. Same with Trey McBride, super fast, tall, and tight ends a tough position to draft in the CPU draft. So that's why we grabbed him. Nicobe Dean, one of the best change of direction linebackers in the game. Also a rookie, super fun to use. Then another rookie, Tyquan Thornton, tall, fast, your poor man's Jamison, who of course is your poor man's Tyreek, but not super poor as both these guys are taller. George Pickens, another wide receiver just for some depth, a little bit of fun. We are kind of, you know, in the rounds where you can't really get super great talent anymore. The AIs do draft a lot better, specifically younger. Leonard Fournette, if you really want a sick backup, this is the guy for you. However, I kind of want Nick Cross more as... Every player here pretty much is going to be going exactly when we're grabbing them. So Nick Cross or Leonard Fournette. For Madden fun, I want Nick Cross. Kendrick Green, he's a guard, but he's still really good. And uh, we're going to grab him to be a guard for us, of course. And then Tyrion Davis-Price. Could have actually been our starting running back instead of Kenneth. But Kenneth is a bit better and more developable, I suppose. So there's that. And even though I'm a Packers fan... Romeo Dubs, in general, is actually a very fun Madden player to use. Then again, he is also six foot two. Everyone's damn six foot two around here. I'm actually just going to go for need over everything. Tyler Smith, uh, left guard, very steel-like. You know, kind of a new Kendrick Green, if you will. And we could use some depth. Could play DT for you, which he possibly would for this team, Logan Hull. All right, round 26, Tariq Woolen, because he's fast, tall, and killing it in our Seahawks franchise. Those are the only reasons, nothing else. So we're going to be getting Troy Anderson in round uh, 30 anyways, but you can never have enough linebacker depth. Channing Tindall is a beast. We're going to grab another tall wide receiver in Christian Watson, six foot four. He is 23, but super fast. And then we are going to grab Troy Anderson here because he goes early 30. So that is our guy. And I hope we don't lose the kicker punter. I didn't really scout this too much. I just figured at this point, Round 30, you need a kicker punter, so why wouldn't you just take them now? Just get it out of the way. So, Mr. Evan McPherson, boom, easy, great kicker. Then we're going to knock out the punter, AJ Cole, best kicker punter dude you can ask for. Then we're going to go a little bit of a lower overall, but 22 years old, uh, a Quanquo, super fast, not a bad number two tight end. And at this point, you're pretty much just drafting players that may not see the field, but in case you get an injury or... A guy's not developing the way you want to. You go for them just to be a backup. You know, you got you know, he's old, but Ty Chandler's pretty decent for a backup running back. And, you know, there's a bunch of decent players that you could still get at this point in the draft, like Calvin Austin, Bo Melton. Oh, how old is Bo? He's 23. I think a lot of the guys that are remaining are going to be like 23, but they're all very usable. Like Alante Taylor, that's a great example. We need a fourth corner, great player. Athletic, beastly. But at this point in the guide, there's not really much more to show, but I suppose I am going to be drafting it out anyway, so I'll just maybe just show the picks that I make, you know, like, why not Calvin Austin finally get a smaller slot type receiver in case that's what you want to do. One of my favorite backup quarterbacks you can get is Mr. Cole McDonald. You could go for someone like Carson Strong, but he does only have a 78 injury, and it's like, do you want your backup who's going to be playing for an injured player with low injury? I, I don't know. You know, Jalen Armour Davis is a great choice. We're going to grab him. It's just, you know, that's why I didn't really go hard on corner. We got one really good one. Stokes is a solid number two. He's like a poor man's Denzel Ward. And then, you know, you have Tariq Woolen. You have these other corners that are really solid. The one position we did kind of sell on is backup edge rusher, I will admit. But you can see there, uh, D'Angelo Malone was there. And that's probably, you know, who we're going to go with. He's a decent backup, right? You know, 23, but... 87 speed, 90 excel, hit powers 80. He's a pretty decent player for a backup. And we are going to go Tyler, uh, uh, Ty Chandler anyways. He's 24. I was going to go with Tyler Goodson instead of the Green Bay Packers, but he's just not as good as Ty Chandler. However, if you're actually planning on using these guys, you know, proper, I would definitely go with Goodson because he is a lot, lot younger. Three years younger, a little bit lower than overall, but it has those, you know, base speed ratings. Toughness sucks, but everything else is all right. You know, fullback stays here for so long. I, I don't even know who I would go for at this point. Patrick Ricard is quite old now. He's 28, but he is still, he's still good enough for me. I love me some 
Patrick McCart. <laughs> Too much of a break in there, and it just sounds like I'm just uh, conceded. And then Bo Melton. You pretty much should be good at wide receiver. I think we have like six of them now. Yeah, we have seven wide receivers, and they're all really good slash young. The Javelin Missile. Got to grab him. Tyson Anderson for backup. You know, raw, but super athletic. Josh Myers is actually not terrible as a center. Not a bad backup. Not great. I wouldn't start him unless you really needed to. You missed out on all the other guys, but not a bad backup. And the last backup, Salyer for lineman at least. Got to grab the speedster Amari Barno. Win her to grab another speedster at corner, Kalen Barnes. And I don't know if it's Godel or Gotel. I should probably know since he's on the Seahawks. But we're going to grab him as depth as I think right now Logan Hall is our DT2. And screw it, Tyler Goodson's been there too long. I'm taking him. Third tight end, Jacob Harris, the speed goat. Holy crap, look at the remaining quarterbacks. They're all so bad. Jake is probably uh, the only guy. I don't even know how you say his name. Delagia? Uh, wait, Delagala. I don't know. <laughs> I guess we'll take him just, just to fill up the roster. But realistically, for me, after like maybe 35 rounds, you're pretty much just drafting guys that will barely see the field. Even though he's old, he is blazing fast, Kyron Johnson. And I suppose why not grab Kyle Juszczyk if he's still here near the end of the draft? I still don't understand how like no kickers go, by the way. Like the team's just not going to grab them. Like once if I decided to get wild and just dra like grab all of them, like what happens, you know? Who's the mentor rookie we got? Because we probably will rebuild this team just to see how good it is, and, you know, somewhere near down the line. Uh, Jameson. Wait, is Jameson Williams going to be a superstar from an... Really? Uh, okay, I wish that would happen in our Lions rebuild, but we'll take it. Well, that's kind of broken. And we are an 81 overall with this much potential. Linderbaum will go up in overall. Uh, Kenneth Walker will go up in overall. Jamison will obviously go up in overall because he's literally a superstar already pretty much. You could choose if you want Pickens or Thornton at number three. Uh, obviously looking at the defensive side of things. Jamin will go up. Chin will go up. Scene will go up. Stokes should go up. Walker will obviously go up. Really, the big thing you need to do is get a, uh, a dev up for Trey Hendrickson, but... He was obviously a huge steal, uh, but this team is obviously really, really solid, and we'll probably end up showing you how solid it is once we do a rebuild of this team. I can maybe do a you know like goal of like 500 likes, and uh, we will actually rebuild the team, or if it never gets 500 likes, we won't, I suppose, but that is going to be the how to draft a perfect fantasy draft team uh, in Madden 23. Like I said, should be a rebuild a little bit later today. I'm not even sure what team yet, to be honest. But hopefully this was informative. Hopefully this helps you uh, land some good draft picks. And of course, the list of players, it's going to be kind of ugly because I don't use like Excel or anything like that. Even though I literally took an Excel class in high school. Uh, yeah, I'd, uh, I don't want to use the Excel. So it's going to be kind of crappy on like a, um, a notepad document. But I'll have the link to... Uh, you know, some image website to click on it if you want to see when, you know, most of the players kind of go around that. It's if in case you're not trying to, you know, maybe either watch the whole video or you uh, want a different player at a different round, perhaps, which, of course, be kind of dumb with the whole uh, you watch the whole video thing because we're literally at the end here. But that's pretty much going to be it. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys come back for next video. But until next video, see ya.